Hello, everybody. Welcome again today to our final study jam. And today we're going to do the add button. And I'm going to share that on the chat here. But first, before we start, as always, we normally have our rule of thumb where we see where we're joining from and what we're doing and what we're excited about and what are we. So today we have prizes as Linda and Anna mentioned, which is a Google Nest Hub Max, which is super cool. So please, I wanna see you there telling us where you're joining from and what are you excited to learn today? Oh, Madonna, I pinned on the chat for the raffle who would like to uh, join our raffle to share their experience in Twitter with the hashtag GDGNYC. Nice. What, uh, what it was the prize? So, again, the Google it's, 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 Hub Max, Max, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I will let you lead. <laughs> yes, Megan. And what yes, uh, just to clarify, Google Nest Hub Max, Max. which is, has fantastic uh, display as opposed to, you know, just the Google regular device. Um, so. cool. It's a fantastic reward for our learners. <laughs> Well, that is true. So let's keep introducing ourselves in the chat. Come on, everybody. We have 15 attendees today. We can do this. I think that Andalus is not on my side. Is that you, Anna? I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah, we can hear an ambulance. Uh, I will uh, now disappear. So the floor oh. is all yours. Oh, okay. I was like, where is the ambulance coming from? Oh, no. Columbia, Missouri, Scranton, Pennsylvania, I think. And New York, Jersey City, New Jersey. Yes, my neighbor. And why? Cool. Nice. So I won't waste a lot of time joining from India because I'm like, perfect. New Jersey, perfect. So the one thing that I want us to fast walk through is just like a reminder of what we've been doing. So in the beginning, we started by practicing a little bit of calling, and that is where we played with the playground where we tried to print a little bit of code in the playground. And then after that, we were able to see how we can create our first application. And in that application, we just actually did a little bit of um, displaying text. And then in the displaying of text, we did a text that was in the beginning of the application and another one that was down. And then we put an image. And then in all that, I kind of like walked everybody through where you can see the, what is it called? Where the source packages are. I mean, how everything is packaged, where you can put your UI test, where you can put your unit test, which is very important, especially when you're writing apps. And uh, what is accessibility, which is a pretty important thing that I feel like everybody should learn about when they're getting introduced to these things or to this Android programming, which is pretty awesome because it's, it's always good to build for everybody. And then with that, I'm gonna stop talking and just share my screen. And then hopefully everybody launches the pro project. So if you save the project, which was happy birthday, I would like for us to go on in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen, my full window. And I see what everybody is seeing now. And uh, I'm just gonna navigate here. And this is the last thing that we're gonna be going through. And one other thing that I, I would like to kind of like like hope that everybody does after this is take time to just do those simple code labs 
and try to see if you can actually take them. Just don't even look at the code, do the exercises where they say fill in this gap, fill it, and then after that, you see if your, pro if, if your, if your program runs. When you encounter pro problems, try to fix those problems. I feel like those problems are the ones that you're gonna encounter when you're working as an Android developer every day. So try doing those simple things and try taking those step code locks. It helps a lot. So let me see here. So that's a lower dice map. I think Anna, the one we're supposed to do is the button, right? We go to this one. Oh yeah, this is this is different, I think. Let me make sure I have the right one. Let me stop sharing that and make sure I have the right one. Just bear with me. As I do that, please, everybody, let's open up our uh, yes, Madonna, we were supposed to do the final one in the the final unit in the Kotlin basics. Um, oh yeah, can I can't see that one. Oh, okay, okay. So oh, yeah, uh, uh, so we do have uh, you know the the first uh, event we did the uh, I will share the entire unit in the chat one moment. Yeah, sure. Uh, so you can uh, you can see all the labs, uh, and um, so in the first uh, our first study jam, we did introduction and create your first app. Which create your first app was about installing Android Studio. Yeah. And uh, last time we started with the birthday card, which people could finish at home. And that now we have add a button to an app. Unless you want to do something else uh, and what the users want, uh, our goal is to introduce them uh, as much as we can to uh, the Kotlin basics. Oh, yeah, that's true. I was just look, refreshing my knowledge on this one. Let me see if uh, just one. I, I know that uh, last time was a little shorter and we didn't uh, entirely finish the uh, build the basic layout but we did I think we did the great progress there oh yeah I think we added the okay so so the next one and the final one in the series is the add a button uh, to uh, an app and then it tells you how to use classes objects oh yeah that is true that is pretty big and intensive yeah um so I was just gonna of course you. yeah you know if we uh if the time so, doesn't allow to do the whole thing we can introduce uh everyone to um the first uh cold lab and then they can um continue, continue the, on yeah. their own time but you know to have to learn what's important uh of course um whatever you you think is the the most uh, valuable sure. perfect so i'm going to go back and share my screen yeah that's your right paul is the is the roll roll your dice which is a super amazing exercise i'm going to do share my screen again full screen and then we're gonna come here. So it looks to me like in this one, the idea is for us to understand classes and objects, object synthesis in Kotlin. So here is a code, here, these are the code labs. Again, you can open this on your, let me share this. I hope everybody has it so that we can go together. I can just share it in the chat. So here, what you can see is for the call up in this part where you'll be building a dice roll Android app. When the user roll, rolls the dice, a random result will be generated. So this is pretty cool because I know if many of you are familiar with programming or have done programming before, 
you must have played or done something to do with the random number generation, which is pretty, pretty popular, like just being able to know how to use the random class. The result takes into account the number of sides of the dice. For example, only value six to be rolled from a six-sided dice. This is what the final app will look like. That's how it should look like. And then it has that particular button that says raw. To help you focus on the new programming concept of this app, we'll use the browser-based Kotlin programming tool to create co-app functionality. The program will output your results on the cons to the console. Later you, later you will implement the user interface in Android Studio. Ooh, pretty amazing. In this Kotlin will create a Kotlin program that simulates rolling dice out for a random number, just like a default a dice board. And these are the prerequisites, so we need this one. Okay, so I think we can refresh our mind on that one. And then for open numbers that uses okay, cool. What you learn. So what you learn is how to programmatically generate random numbers to simulate dice roll, how to structure your code by creating the variable and a method how to create an object instance of a class, modify its variable, and call its method. That is super cool. Now, so here, I just want to make sure. So I think we will need to go to the, to the browser here where we'll put, OK, let me see. OK, so that is our calling playground. Hope everybody has loaded their calling playground. And if you remember this one, what's pretty cool, because if we run this one, it's just going to print, hello world. OK, so we have our function main. OK, and then here it says, use the random function to roll a dice. You need a way to represent all the valid dice rolls. Value for regular six-sided dice, the accepted dice roll are one, two, three through six. So one of the things that I can say is, as a person that has been doing Android, one of the things that you do, especially given a project, is sit down, start design how, but what, start designing how it will look like. But I feel like if you're working with a team, that is something you don't do alone, you do with the entire team at work. And then you come together and decide this is what we'll use, this is the kind of patterns we will use. We will either have an interface or we'll either have, you know, other ways of accessing this data and stuff like that. So here we have a var dice, which has a range of one through six. So we can go ahead and do that. And then here we have inside main, define a variable val called random number that dice range. So let's go and do that. And as always, I hope everybody is following through and 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 writing them too. Okay, so we need a val random number. Plus we need a val, uh, the dice range. Okay, so let me close that. Let me close that. Close that and just have my calling. So I'm going to have a vial dice range, which is going to be from one through six. And then I think it's two, one through six. And then is, that is outside my main, I think. Should be outside main. Or oh, it's inside main. Okay. And then we'll have a random number. Oops, sorry. Val random number, which will be equals to the dice range of random number. So I think if we call that, that random, oh, so it's okay, yeah small, the random. And then I bet we can print this. Print line. So here it says we do random number. So giving it that. And then this is how 
we access, we access the, um, we print out that particular number. Something that I, I just wanna say something that I saw today, which was very funny. I noticed that when you, so for instance, if you've been writing, um, for instance, if you've been writing Java code and then you switch to Kotlin, sometimes it can be tricky like to figure out how does actually Kotlin do this particular thing and how would I make it much easier? So finding that that trick is always not, I mean, it's not, just speaking for myself, it's not that easy, but I learned that their documentation site is pretty good. So I always have it on my laptop, like bookmarked, my work laptop, so that I can always go back there to reference sometimes. So here I see we have this annotation, which is the dollar sign. So I'm gonna do random number. Dollar sign. Oh, wasn't a dollar sign, was it? Oh, it was dollar sign. Okay. Is that dollar sign? Here's the dollar sign. <laughs> Random number. Okay. It looks different there. Random number. Now let's try to run this and see if it's going to work. Okay, so it did work. I don't know. I'm, am I seeing my thing? This, well, it's not a big issue. <laughs> okay, so as long, I think the output will be different because we are going through a range of one through six. So definitely we will go in a range through 10, we'll get random numbers through that range. So here we can get the next one to be six, the next one either to be three again, Six, one, two, again, we can get five, four. Has, has everybody finished that, that? Let me see in the chat. Done. Is anybody having difficulties with it? I only got two done. If you see me looking on the side, I'm just looking at the chat. Done, done, done. Cool. So that's done. So, and this is what we got. So ranges can be between integers. The following are valid ranges through six, three, four, six through 46, zero through that, and then that there. And then let's see what next we have. So next what we have is, oh, this is amazing. This, oh yeah, so the interesting thing is that we do have the code lab, but otherwise what I would say or encourage is for someone to try to do it first without seeing the code lab, like try to see if you can just follow the instruction without having it and see if you can get that part going. But here, I find reading through the, it's always good to, to read through it because it helps a lot to like just understand and have that terminology in your mouth. Like, what are we saying when we create an instance of the dice class? What is an instance of the dice class? And also, what is what do they what do we mean by the object instances? Those are good things to know too. I know it, I mean, to me, it doesn't come naturally immediately. Sometimes I have to think through it just a bit, but it's all the same actually for either Java or Kotlin. So here, as you can see, we define a dying class. To start a fresh clear, okay, so we need to clear our code in main. Let's go in, clear that. And because maybe we have, we always have one hour, 30 minutes, we can skim through this pretty quick. So below the main, so we need to create a, to create a class called dice. So we can create a, we can create a class called dice. I think that should be outside, not capital. 
we need to create a class called dice. And then inside a class, similar to using the function keyword, in Kotlin to create a new function, use the class keyword to create a new class. Cool. So inside there, I think we have a var size, which is six. There we're going to define size. So we're going to say var size equals six. And what else do we have? And now we're going to create an instance of the dice class. Within the dice class, you have a blueprint of what dice of what a dice is. To have an actual dice in your program, you need to create a dice object instance. And you need to have three dice. You you all create three object is three object indices. And here, to create an object instance of dice in the main function, create a val called my first dice, and then initialize it as an instance of the dice class. Okay, so now we're gonna go to main and do that. So in main, we're gonna do val my first dice will be equals to, I think we say dice. So that is my first dice. So right now, as you see it like that, nothing, I mean, it, it will definitely run if it doesn't have any compile, compile errors, but it will not print anything because we don't, we don't set anything up to, we don't use anything here or tell it to print anything. So we need to keep going for sure. And it's here, there's a notice that the parentheses after the class name, which donates that denotes that you're creating a new object instance from the class. Now that you have my first, ob my first dice object, a thing made from the blueprint, you can access its properties. The only property of dice is its size. You can access property using the dot notation, so to access the size properties of my dice. That's interesting. So here we have the class dice that has a var of six size, of size, which is equals to six. And then here now we're going to print this. Before, uh oh, I hope nobody saw that. Before we print that, how many know what that's gonna be printed out in the chat? Does anybody have a clue? I hope nobody saw that. But if I was to print that out, what do you think we'll get? attendees what do you think we'll get so i'm gonna do print so that is like out of print line here my fast dies dot size back to the chat six six make and good okay is that too easy? I feel like that was too easy. <laughs> okay, so as the chat said, it's gonna print six. Basically because of what we're just doing, we just, because we've already told this my dice should read from dice. So inside dice, we can access sides and sides was already six. So we'll come here and say my first dice sides, which is equals to six and print six. Okay. Going to the next tab. You now have a dice class and an actual dice, my first dice with six sides. Now, we need to create a function called Rob. This is getting even better. So inside the class, we're gonna create a function called Rob. So here we're trying to be smart and start rolling our dice. Oh, I forgot something. A function needs to have those parentheses. When you roll, so here, when you roll a six sides dice, so it's always when you get time to read this particular part here, it's pretty great too. Inside the roll, inside the roll method, create a var random number, assign it to a random number in through one to six range. Use the dot notation to call random 
on the range. So as you can see inside, it's telling us to create a random with our range. So definitely this one we can do as we did before. So we're gonna have a val random number will be equals to, I think one through six. And then I think the random, I'll make sure I am. And then what we'll do, we'll print line, I think random number. So they want us to print the random number. So to actually draw my fast time in main, call the raw method on my fast dice. So this is what you're gonna do. My fast dice dot roll. And so you can see that's how it looks like. So let's go ahead and do that. My fast dice dot roll. So I'm gonna pause a little bit. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Anybody know what that will print out? I've not showed the answer yet. Anybody have any idea what that's gonna do? Write in the chat. Okay. I see that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Please feel free. Don't feel free. I mean, Wait, <laughs> it's getting darker here. Feel free to share what you think will be printed out. Don't be afraid. Like, I mean, there's no wrong answer. That's what I always believe because we're, we're learning together. So Abbas said random number between one to six. It printed six one. Okay, okay. Anybody else? I like doing this kind of exercise because I want to make sure that everybody is participating through writing the code. Because I've learned one thing that I've learned, I am not a perfect like developer. It's 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 never that like it uh, like it's not that easy. And one of the best thing that helps me, and I've had this from even senior engineers, is to keep writing that code, practice writing that code, and then it starts coming naturally, and then it becomes easy and easy when you keep practice, when you keep writing down, like those steps. I know sometimes it can get easy where I just decide to copy and paste, but writing it, practicing how to write those val random numbers equals to this. That writing helps even the brain, like, like okay, random number equals this, and then now I'm calling dice, and then I'm calling this particular thing and putting a dot to this. It helps a lot. Still waiting, I got one minute to see anybody else with a clue. Anybody else? Going first, going second. So, yeah, I think maybe people are not very confident of it. Okay. So, as you can see, it will print six and then the particular random number that will come through this range. So nothing is gonna be very unique about it. And everybody might get a different output. Yeah, six, two, like Sassy said, good. It might print, mine might be different. Let me see what mine's gonna be. Mine's gonna be six, one, or mine is gonna be, what's the other one that we can get? Six, four, for instance. And what other one can we get? Six one again, six four, six three. So it it can it can vary, which is awesome. Now let's keep going. Oh, congratulations! You've done a dice class at the side with the sides variable and the roll function. In the main function, you created a dice object instance, and then you called the roll method on it to produce a random number. Perfect. Now. It says here, uh, sorry, I need to start up here. Currently, you're printing out the value of the random number in your role function, and that works great.
but sometimes it's more useful to return the results of a function to whatever called to whatever called the function. For example, you called assign the result to raw method to a, to a variable and then move a player by that amount. Let's see how that's done. In main, modify that line, this line here, and create a var called dice roll. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a val dice roll equals my first die roll. So what we're going to just do is just come here and say val dice roll will be equals to that. So now we're making sure we have this dice roll that takes from this one. Uh, this doesn't do anything yet because it won't do anything because we are not using the dice roll. Now, in order to, for this code to work as intended, um, intended roll has to return something. So here we can return an integer. So roll can return an integer. Run this code, you'll see an answer. That, okay, so let's do that first. So if we put an int here, is that the int? Okay. So if we run this, we'll get the problem. Okay, yeah, which is good. Does anybody? I know we've not, we've not gone through it. Does anybody know how we would return that that particular statement? Just put it in the chat if you have a clue. Okay, using it, yeah, that's true. Using it, chat. Using a return return keyword, but then what would we put on the return keyword at the end of the function? But we need something. What would that something be? Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are all good suggestions. I like that. Okay, so here, return this code, you'll see an error, and then that's what we got. You change the function definition to return an integer. So we will definitely need to return an integer. Where is now the random number? So we're gonna go there and do that. So here, we need, uh, we need to remove this, the print line, and now return a random number. Now, if we run this, if we run this, will we get any results? Now, if we run, if we, if we run this, what do you think will happen? Do you think while my dice will be printed out? Okay, yeah, good, 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 vegan. <laughs> Yeah, so the dice, so this dice roll here is still not used, even though we return a random number in this particular function, we're not still using this one. So if we run this, let's just try and see. We'll just get the first thing, which is, this is what we're printing out, six, which was here besides. Cool, I like that. Okay, now let's keep going. So what we'll do now, in your main, and then so now we return that. So in our main, what we'll do on my first side, my first side is draw that. We have all that information. We'll do this print line, your my first side, and then that, the dash wall. So I'm just going to copy this instead of writing it all and just put it right here. Remove that extra bra brace. And then when we run this now, what will be printed out? The reason is why I like asking that is just it just helps my attendees just to kind of like think through it. Even though it's easy code, just think through it a bit. Like what will be printed there without even looking at the solution. Anybody know what will be printed there? And I do know some of my attendees are pretty good programmers. I remember somebody had 20 years experience, which is awesome and random number good. Anybody else think something else will be printed there? I 
agree. I see my other attendees are not talking. I hope you enjoy. I hope that you're enjoying the <laughs> enjoying the session. I know it's we're not doing like the Android stuff yet, but it's just good to just walk through that part. Okay. So that's what, that's what it's printed out. So if I run this, you'll see it will print that particular site. And then this, this one here, since it's gonna be a random number, that number might be different for everybody. So where it says your six-sided dice rolled five, which is awesome. Now, um, that's what we get. This is what we got. Oh, look at us, we are in five. Let's clap for everybody, that's awesome. Okay, now here it's getting intense. Okay, change the number of dice. Oh, sorry, sides on your dice. So here we need to change the numbers. So here we're gonna have a val random number will be equals to one through sides. And in the main function below, we're gonna do this. My fast dice equals 20 and then print that out. So let's go ahead and do that. I think here we're gonna do the sides. So we know sides equals six, but here I think we're gonna change the sides to 20. Oh, okay, so this one is gonna be 20 in my fast dice. Instead, uh, let me see, is that my fast dice dot sides? Let me make sure I'm getting this correct. So we're gonna put sides equals 20, cool. I'm just gonna grab this one here. And then we're gonna print line that, and then my fast dice dot roll. Oh, I made a bar with this one here. My fast dice dot roll. Now, let me see. If, I know I did not give out the answer yet. Let me give everybody one minute. What do you think is going to be printed out in this one? This is getting intense now. What do you think is going to be printed out? Six, okay. Just six? Anybody else? Okay, just range between, okay, okay. Anybody else? If you have no clue, also say no clue, which is awesome too, because we're learning together. Six and six, okay. Cool, let's go there and run it and see what we'll get. So if we run this, as you see, your 20 sides dice rolled five. And here you'll see your 20 sides so here, I think we printed this one, this one line. So we kept this one. Oh, okay. I think mine, I removed that part. I think I need to change that to this part here. And then now I will have, oh yeah, dice roll. Oh yeah, it's down here. So hopefully now I will say, yeah, there you go. So diff, different, so I mean, different solutions for different cases because we're dealing with the random numbers, which is awesome. So here, as you can see, we go ahead and now do customizing our dice. So customizing is more of the idea is to represent a thing, often something physical in the real world in this dice. In this case, a dice class does represent a physical dice. In the real world, dice cannot change the number of sides. If you want a different number of sides, you need to get a different dice programmatically. So we read through that. I see this in here. So now we're getting more technical. We're gonna in, now add pass, passing num, num sides inside our dice. So 
instead of oh this is awesome so instead of here going through the sides we're just going to pass this in and call it inside our function so let's go ahead and do that so add some parentheses and they say well num site which is an int and then here instead of sites we just say num num sites and um, I think we removed our previous code of our site because that's not used. It's always good to remove the ones we're not using. Five and two. Good, Sassy. Okay, so we have all my first dice. Oh, so now we are passing inside here. So we're going to see my first dies equals six my first size now so if you if you run this one thing that i want to just mention is that since we passed something inside the dice this will not run it will not work because it needs something here let me just do that as you can see there's an error because it's like uh what is happening i don't see anything here but because this is an integer it means you can put any number we can see seven but he let's just see six Six and then now we can print this in num size and then do the dice roll. Okay, let's do that. My first dice dot. I think it was num site, and then I think that one remains like that. And now if we run that, we have an error. So I think I need to remove. This one's two because we're not using them. I can comment this one. Oh, I can't comment now like that. Okay, just dub, double that one. Comment it down. Okay. So if I run this one, it should print out your six sided dice. Roll six. Now, um, after printing the dice roll, Oh, now we're going to pass 20 inside my second dice. So um, this is what we'll have. My first dice is going to be 6. My second dice is going to be 20. And then print out this particular one. So I'm going to just bring this over here. This is pretty intense than I thought, which is pretty awesome. But I feel I feel like it's it's pretty good because it's just practice it fast, like how you would write this. Because I feel like if you took this in Android, it's not going to be very different. It's going to be the same thing. So the idea here might be just to help people think through like just how you would create it, formulate it, and then just borrow the same and put it just on an Android Studio IDE. And then run it as an with some UI element and it will do the function. Like for instance, we might add add a button to do the rolling of the of the dice and then get the solutions. So in here, if you run that, yeah, that's what we got. Definitely different input because this is random again. Now and then here, I see we have adopting to good coding so here we can just ask so what they're telling us here is just how we can just reduce this particular line to one and basically this is because this can be a one-liner because what we're doing is if we're not going to use this anywhere else we can just return it here instead of having a val and everything you can just remove all this and replace this with a return. And that would still work the same. And then in here, as you can see, we have um, also we returned that. So call my five sets of wrong in the string template and delete that for variable. Oh, so now we're going to delete as. A variable there. So let's see. So what we're gonna have? Oh, so we, yeah. So what we've done is we've, we've cut down a lot of 
some of this and just made it. Wait, what did we cut down? The brain line, well, that looks the same. Okay. So here we have found my dice, first dice equals that, my second dice equals that, and then it get the noun sides. Oops, looks similar. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not doing my own things. And this, this is going to be your final code after refactoring. So solution code. That is the solution summary. So summary we have called the random function on an int range to generate an, a random number from one through six. And then place the like blueprint of an object. And this is something that all of you can run. I just don't want to spend a lot of time reading through that. And there's more details here on how you can keep doing it and then practice on your own. So here you have give your own dice class another attribute of color, create multiple instances of the dice, the different sides color, create a coin class, give the ability to flip. Well, this is awesome. So I'm going to share this with everybody in the chat to kind of like, when you get time, just keep practicing that and then see how it goes. Let me stop sharing my screen, screen a bit and then look at what Android side we have and see if we can cover that a bit. But otherwise, please let me know in the chat what you, because that was a fact, that was amazing because it's just like practicing a bit of coddling. And then I think the second part now is where we do the roll dice. I didn't know this last part had like six activities, which is a lot for the time that we have. So let me see the second one that we have. Okay. Let me make sure it's something we can do within, because I also want to make sure that, you know, I'm an Android person like when we play a bit with the Android stuff. So that everybody feels like, oh yeah, we got that Android stuff going. Oh, cool. So this is something we can definitely do within like, we can go pretty, because we, we learned in the first one how to create and to create our apps and go through that pretty quick. So we can definitely begin this one, the second one where we'll print, we'll roll the dice. Let me share my screen again. And I appreciate everybody for hanging out with me. I know it's late, but I enjoy teaching Android or sharing. Okay, so before you begin in this code lab, I will not read through all this because it's a lot of information, but please on your own free time, feel free. And I feel like if this was in more in person, I'll just walk around, just seeing how everybody's doing it and just give a little bit of exercises so that we can see, I can see how everybody is copying up with everything, but because it's online, it's a bit different. But here, what I want us to do, so this is what it's gonna look like. We have a dice, so sorry, not a dice. We have a button and then we'll have a text view. And in this text view, I think is where we'll be displaying the numbers, which is what we did before in this here. We'll just display the number. And then every time the button is clicked, like raw, it will print either two, raw, either three, raw, either four, okay. So let's go ahead and start a new project. And it's an empty activity. And then we call it dice roller finish. It's loading up. Let me make sure. Can everybody see my screen? Still checking everybody can see my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Well, you can't. Oh, somebody cannot. 
Wait, what what happened? So you can't see it? Let me stop sharing and I'll try again. My understudy is loading. So I have, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I had to stop sharing that a bit. Now can you see? Yeah, I have to go back there and see <laughs> the chat. So I'm waiting for Andre to load a, to load a bit. But okay, it's loading out. If this now I see the code, cool. Create an empty activity. Yeah, it, it is an it, it is an empty activity because what we're doing currently, we we're just gonna add this. First we're gonna add the UI. And then we're gonna add the code that we wrote, hopefully. So this is the dice roll. And then here, we've done this before. So we'll, we'll, I think we'll leave the text. We definitely need to leave the text there. So let's go to activity main. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, I know I have my little laptop. I didn't bring my monitor because last time my monitor broke. <laughs> it is terrible. I'm gonna zoom in. So here we need to add a button. So let's add a button there. Just drag it. And then make sure I fit it in the center just nicely. And then I can constrain this there and then move it a bit and then i can just come here and do those margins maybe down a bit go back here and just throw them to zero i like doing that so just make sure it, it's good just pull it closer there so this button we're going to go and rename it if you remember how we do this one remember again this one needs to be extracted, clean coding. So here we need to say what the button is. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be called raw. Now we have a clean string called button that now says raw. And then instead of the text saying hello world, this one we might remove that because we don't it, it's just gonna work based on what we'll give it. Like let's say if it's a dice number, we can name it dice number. And this button, we can call it roll, like that. So here we need to change that because we changed the other one. So just dice number should work. Okay. In the chat, let me see if any, everybody has done that, that part. I hope I'm not too fast. Also, it looks like it was a lot of information within a short time. But hopefully this is something that you will do even afterward, like just keep practicing that, that particular course even if we ran out of time. So promise you will do that. It will help a lot. So as you've seen, oh, that's what I did. Constrain that and then move the other part. As you can see, this is exactly what we have. They do not constrain the back down to anything, which is okay. But you can definitely, and then it's named raw. That's what I've done, raw. And then we have hello world. They still kept this one, but you can keep this one or you can remove it because this one will definitely need to change. So it doesn't have to have a default text. And then I see they had the default text to be as one. Oh, wait, there's nothing. Okay. And then we can run our app. Oh, not Zoom, Android. <laughs> okay, when we run our app, it's gonna, it takes time to load a bit, but it should just come up with the roll and then the button. Now, so we have activities. So I see you, oh, okay, we can go from up. So activities are more like, okay, so one of the things that I can say is, a, how do you get to create an interactive dice roller app? 
thanks for that. So we did not, I mean, we've not created it one, but you can definitely create one that it's very interactive. And I feel like the code labs definitely will, will guide you like that, that, where you can even add an image. Let me look through this one where you can add an image and everything, and then it's gonna be more interactive and you can see it raw. But you can also add some animations to it, which is gonna be even more fancier. So yeah. Myself, I've not created a dice roll app before. I've just created a, a budgeting app. <laughs> That's the one I've created. <laughs> and now the work that I work, I mean, the app's not where I work, but it's, it's a fun activity. So um, I will encourage everybody to go read through like what activities are, why we use activities, but I wanted to mention one thing about activities. We, the new recommended way of writing code in Android is more of a single class, a sorry, single activity, and then multiple fragments. So we use a single activity and then we have multiple fragments. So multiple fragments, so fragments are little screens that we can use instead of calling, instead of creating activities, 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 just create simple fragments that can be used. And the good thing about that is that you can use like three fragments in one screen, or you can just, just handling them nicely with the navigation helps a lot. Otherwise, I mean, before that, long time ago, we used to write just activities and activities before the fragments and that was not clean that was very messy because we kept we had a lot of intent start new activity and you know like that was that was not ideal i like how we've advanced from that and that said let me make sure that our app finished and launched well it's still running but let me see if, if anybody was successful please put in the chat if you were successful like you was ran If you're able to run the fast button. And then now we're gonna make the button interactive. Yes, yes, good, yeah, that's very true, Tiano. Nice. I see a question. Do fragments have a minimum API? So no. So fragments and screens that I used in, so, I don't think, I mean, I don't, I don't think they have a minimum API because the minimum API is definitely defined for the entire app. And that only says that. So there might be deprecate. I mean, there might be features in the fragment that might be deprecated, but that doesn't mean that you cannot use them. So you can still use them uh, in, let's say, what is it? If you go down through, if you go down to 16, you can still use fragments, but there are methods that you cannot use. I mean, sorry, let me not say the methods. You, you'll still use everything because even if it's deprecated, it's always backward compatible. So you can definitely use it. You just use the at deprecated or you can say ignore deprecation. <laughs> So yeah, the activities, they help with the interaction and that's what I was saying, the fragments because they are little screens, it helps more. And also making your apps follow the, 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 the latest pattern, the great patterns. Uh, I wanna see, oh, my emulator is taking time to come online. There's a problem I have these days. Now, we can make this particular, we can make this more interactive, that is, through setting on click listener to this role, this button, and then displaying something in the text view. And I think that's the next step here. Right here, as you can see, we have um, the var role button inside our function on this one, which has, this is more like our main in Android. So as you can see here, we have our role button, button equals to that, find view by ID. So mostly the new patterns that we use, like we don't even use find view by ID, but definitely if you're new, that's okay. You get to use find view by ID. But with the view binding, we don't need to do all that stuff. We can access the view just by saying binding dot 
And then we get that particular name like binding.button, which makes it more easy to read. But I feel like not to complicate it too much because it's just straightforward. So here, what we're doing currently is just displaying a toast. So a toast is kind of like a message that you see every time you click on a button. So you can go ahead and add this code to your, to your, to, to your button. As you see, that's what we did. Val raw button, go get that button. Ours we called it raw. And then we do roll, set on click listener. That is a click listener to that button. So when you tap it, you will see stuff. And then the good thing is when you're designing, your designer might tell you like, hey, this button is too, just like that. Can you add some ripple effect? So you can add ripple effects to the buttons too. You could combine the two lines. So this is what they're doing. This dice rolled length. So Again, what I've mentioned, this is just, oh yeah, this one, you can just make it one line. You don't have to do toast to show. You can just come and say toast to show here. And definitely this is what I do a lot at work. If I'm displaying a toast or trying to test something, but otherwise this one also, it's okay, but uses two lines and this one uses one line. So if you clicked on that, what you'll see is dice rolled. Did everybody do that one? I know we we don't have a lot of time to. And I'm hoping when we go back to in person, I can meet most of you. Even when if everybody's like doing greater and employed and working. Yes. Done, dice roller. Okay, interesting. You finish it all? Well, that's cool. Yes, okay. That's cool. Oh, pulling, pull. Only dice roll. Okay, okay, cool. And I feel like it, it can be good even if you see the code, just to try to write it. I know the code loves the idea. So, one, that, one other thing that I, I like to mention, I know Udacity has this project, many projects. Let me, sh let me just show you something here. Let me move away a bit into a different topic. I know uh, this, this Udacity has this amazing, um, these exercises here. One of the things that I did was I went through this particular, um, you can, you can clone this re repository in your local and then try to solve the problems. These problems are pretty good. So they give you a problem. Let me share it with everybody. So they give you a problem, like, and then they tell you to solve it. They do give you an answer later, but the idea is try to solve it and see if you can, if you understand what's going on. And it's very well written out. Don't look for the answer first. Try to do it yourself and then go, and then you can check, you can check your solution upon, you can check your answer upon the solution and just compare the two. So, and let me see, is it for beginners? Yeah, it's not very hard. I remember I, I did this when I, long time ago, this is three years ago, yeah. I, and I remember I did, oh, let me see, I did like every question. And I think that's why it says the repository, because you can see here, it says like this repository is mine, but it's not mine. I just did, I kind of like just did the entire, I did all the problems and I kept like margin the work. So that's why it, it, it appears. Because it's just, if I fucked a project, you show it's a fucked project, but take your time and try it. So that is just, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that is in Java. I apologize for that. Yeah, that is in Java. But one thing that I can say is that try to see. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I wish they had it in Kotlin. Hmm. Yeah, I send the URL there. So one of the other, I know it's not big. It might not be. They might have beginner friendly. 
And one of the idea that I, one of the other things that I like to mention about learning is take that one that is more of, so you see the code, try to write that code just slowly using Kotlin and see if it makes sense. I, I do know now we have the option of converting that entire code to Kotlin. You can use that route. You can take those exercises, all of them, convert them back to Kotlin. It, I mean, the ID does a great job, even though that's, I wouldn't, I would like for everybody to practice writing the entire Kotlin code, but you can combine it and then try to solve the solutions, like solve it. I don't know, sometimes it puts a lot of the bang bangs, which is those exclamation marks. Don't use those ones because they're very well, people don't, I don't know why people don't like them. I mean, they're not good to use the smarter ways of doing it because everybody will know, yeah, you just converted this project from Java to Kotlin. <laughs> but other than that, I think, oh, mine is still loading. I feel like maybe my internet gets slowed down when I'm doing this because it doesn't seem like it runs, which is pretty sad. Well, let me see if the app, it's not. Okay, do not launch you, okay. But I think in the chat, I, I saw everybody said they, and actually, to just be fair, I don't think every company is strictly using Kotlin. Some of other companies are also using Java. So it's a win-win. If you get a company that's still using Java, fine, you will have known. Because I feel like Java and Kotlin are not very, I mean, I know Kotlin and Swift looks a bit similar, but Java and Kotlin is not similar, but it's not very hard to grasp. They're kind of like, it's just changing the things. Like if you put a val, a particular um, variable, and then int. Before in, in Java, you would do the reverse. Like a particular int, and then the variable, and then you declare. Oh, yeah, 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 that's a very good point, Yano. Yeah, Kotlin is somehow based from Java. Yeah, that is true. And that's why even most of the, some of the things that we do, we, we kind of like even say, da, 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 access this particular class through dot class dot Java, which I'm like, oh, okay. So it still depends on, on Java a lot. Yeah, that's a good point. So it feels like we have 15 minutes, but it feels like we're not, going we I mean it's not very bad so you can so the code that we wrote here what I would say is try to play around with this too on the app and see what you can achieve if people ran this already you will see what we'll get is the dice roll let me see our dice roll logic so logic is something that we do a lot especially when you're writing Android stuff and mostly we follow patterns like uh, before there was MVC, there's MVI, there's MVVP. And currently we use MVVP a lot. That is model, view, view model, which is um, great where we separate the UI and the business logic. So as you can see here, this is the same thing that we did. So nothing, the only different thing is gonna be like converting this to a particular string. So here, what we're doing is trying to make sure that we display that particular thing here, that particular text view that we had, we're displaying something to it. So here we're gonna get the results and then take the dash row to string. So if you run that, you will notice that it will keep printing, that it will print the, it will print the random numbers. And then adopt to good practices here which is more clean code. So here we, you can have a function that is just extracting your code, making sure that it looks good. And then commenting it is pretty good too. And then here's the solution code. So please feel free on your free time to go through some of this. And, oh, wait, you can import a pro, you can import. Ah, okay. There's a solution code here. Oh, okay, good. It's also good to mention that Google does have this prog project, just to make sure. So this is the app, the Dice Roll app. 
Let me see what it has on the main activity. So this is exactly what we wrote on, on this playground. So this is what's gonna be used. So we have that, find the button, set on click listener. The click listener gets this particular function and does that and then appends the solutions to the text view. And then we have the dice class like that. So what I would ad advise everybody that came today, try to see without looking at the solution. Let me go back, without looking, promise you'll not look. Promise, promise, promise. Because if you look, it, it really doesn't help a lot. But promise you'll fast. It's just like our algorithms, you know? Don't look at the solution first. Try to solve it first. Try and see if you can get it to work and then try to, to see if it you can you can have it running. Uh, let me see if we develop a training. Oh, I like this one too. Okay, this is this is super cool too. Let me share this with everybody here. Please make sure you bookmark that link for everybody that's learning and go through those problems. Make sure you don't look at the solution first. It's the same way like with the Udacity one where they had, so this is for further challenges and if you wanna challenge yourself more. And then now the summary. And that's it. I hope everybody enjoyed today's session even though it was a bit intensive. And uh, I mean, I like it because that is getting everybody now into the weeds of Android development, like how you create these classes, how you connect everything together, how you make the buttons click, how you, I know there's the bigger part now of uh, seeing how you can add animations oh, and the lots. And if you have a very complex UI, stuff like that. But I wouldn't overwhelm everybody a lot today. Just make sure that, take the Kotlin ones, and then keep training on those ones. Let me also bookmark this. I to bookmark, I like I have Android stuff, Android work. Like keeping my things organized. It's much easier to find them. <laughs> okay, that's it. Please let me know in the chat. It even go dark here at night. It's 7.20. Please let me know in the chat how you felt about today's session. I think there is a question in the q and I'm not sure if you answered it. It says, yes, do, I, frag do fragments have a minimum API? Yes, I think I I answered. Oh. I think I asked it, yeah. Okay, I might have one? missed it. Yeah, it's okay. Do you You're like welcome, us, Megan. Do you like us to bring everyone uh, on the... Yes. Yes, please. I like to see my team. Okay. And, and let's give follow. everyone a chance to enter our raffle. Yes. To go to have a, a nice memory, a Google Nest Hub Max, as well as your learnings. Uh, so if you uh, want to... Uh, tweet or re retweet something with uh, the hashtag GDG NYC. Uh, you're welcome to do that now. Oh yeah, I mean, I, great session. Thank you very much, Ashley, it means a lot. I know it wasn't easy. I mean, it was pretty intense, but I, I hope everybody learned something new. Because the same way we wrote that code, if you notice, is the same way that we translated it inside the Android. So it's never different. So you can actually write your code outside and just copy it into the IDE and it, it will still be the same. Thank you, Abbas. I don't see... Uh... So in order to uh, join our...